All right, y'all, that Get Right at Night right here on Pair 98.3, 96.1 for the East Valley. Special guest up in studio, Bryce Vine. What's going on, man? What's going on with you? Are you doing fine? Let's I'm see. great. I'm a rapper now, too. Where are you coming <laughs> from? How you doing, man? What's the, what's the word? We flew into Tucson from L.A. this Ooh. morning, and then we drove here. Ooh. So I'm good, though. Like, it's that drive 108 outside. Got the AC blowing. I'm good. The drive was cool though, cause the drive from Tucson here. Is I boring. was riding on the way here. I, I like I like drives if I don't have to drive, cause I could put on my headphones and just work on my phone. It's a lot harder to do when you're driving. No, I feel you. People get upset. Do you when you're on the road and stuff like that? Do you do most of your riding, or what do you do normally at work wise, like when you're driving? I just, Especially as a passenger. I just like I have listened to a beat on my phone that I'm working on right now, and then just try to come up with lyrics based on what I'm seeing and or like what what I would want. To hear if I was on a road trip, you know what uh, I mean? Okay, okay, like I try to write that song. Like, what do people want to hear in this moment when they're doing this? They want to hear like, "We're only young and having <laughs> like that uh, naked and famous <laughs> song," you know, that kind of thing. All right, man. So talk about musical influence. Let's talk your upbringing because your style is pretty dope. Oh, like thanks. I was looking at you and I was following you on the social media and I was like, okay, okay, okay. You look like you're from LA, but then I read you from New York. I born in New York. Okay, so tell us about that. Yeah, tell I us was, a story. I was born in my mom's uh, apartment and her. Manhattan bathtub. Oh, snap. She had, she had two gay midwives. You can know that now, too. That's what? cool. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so that was just like, that was just an interesting start to life, I guess. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. Just in a tub. Yeah. But I grew up out here. I mean, I'm not out here. I grew up in Los Angeles and um, went to high school out there and started a punk band in high school. And, and then I went to school in Boston at Berkeley. Oh, snap. So you got musical... Stuff from everything from punk to hip-hop. Running through the veins, man. So how did you get to rap, though? Like, this, just this hip-hop in general. From rap punk? is just part of what I do still. You know, mm -hmm. it's just like if I feel like rapping, then I rap on a song. Some of my songs don't have rap. Some of them are all singing, but I don't love my singing voice, so most of the time I do rap stuff. Um, but, I, I mean, I was in a, like I said, I was in a punk band first. I taught myself guitar when I was 13. Like, that's how I started. I'm like, I'm going to write songs, and this is the instrument I'm going to do it with. I didn't really want to be a guitar player. I just wanted it to write. Just to make some music yeah. real quick. And then I uh, uh, started a band in high school, and I listened to, like, Rancid and Operation Ivy, and I went to Warp Ooh, Tour, yeah. and, um, you know, like, my, my dr drummer was a lesbian, and my guitar player had, like, the blue oh, mohawk, <laughs> mohawk thing. It was a wild-looking band. And then, um, <laughs> yeah, man, and then I just I used one of the songs that I had written in that band to audition to go to Berkeley and I got a partial scholarship and that and I'm yeah so from the <laughs> punk band you get accepted to college where does the where the band stop do you not try to find a new band out there or you at just, Berkeley yeah yeah I did I mean I went the first couple months when you go from a medium-sized fish in a small pond to a really small fish in a big, big pond. pond I mean Berkeley is just filled with all the most talented people in the world that didn't go to Juilliard or something, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So um, it was intimidating, man. I remember like two months into being at Berkeley, I called my mom and I'm like, I don't think, I don't think they meant to like Give let me in here. Yeah, yeah. I honestly felt like I'd taken somebody's place that deserved it because I tried to do gospel ensemble and those singers are just the most powerful and I always had a low voice, but the teacher let me in because he knew I wanted to learn and then I did reggae ensemble and I've, Knocked on this dude's door, actually, who's now uh, the first producer I worked with at Berkeley. He's now in the group Lost Kings, the the DJ oh, duo. Um, but he's who I first started rapping with and, like, making more pop stuff because we were listening to Graduation, you know? Okay. And, uh, like, a lot of Lupe Fiasco. Like, yeah. And that's around that time, like, New Boys were popping a little yeah. bit and stuff like that. All that colorful <laughs> stuff was cool. So that's how I got into it because rap started to become available to people with a positive attitude really is what yeah. it was it wasn't just all like gangster rap yeah. wasn't about like trapping yeah. and stuff like, like that yeah and like graduation for me kind of solidified that even as far back as how do you want it by tupac was like the start of just good time rap you know yeah um so i was like yeah i can get involved in this yeah <laughs> hell yeah and then i just immersed in everything you know from like tribe to even some african music like fella cootie and uh 
Yeah, man. I just, I love anything I think sounds good. That's dope. So after Berkeley, you go back home to L.A., or do you go stay stay there? What, what happened? No, I left Berkeley uh, two years in to take oh. a music opportunity that a lot of people actually saw me on for the first time called The Glee Project. Uh, it was like a music competition. So everyone at Berkeley was auditioning at one point over MySpace <laughs> for this. It was my freshman year at Berkeley, or sophomore year, I don't remember. Uh, and everyone was auditioning for this reality show where they picked the new kids to be on Glee and uh and I sang Gold Digger by Kanye and sent in my audition and I made it onto the show they picked like 12 people and uh and then I was the first one cut so then from there I was like okay better get started writing my own <laughs> stuff you know catch the attention of the people when the show comes out and that's kind of how I actually got started for real now yeah, as a right, solo so artist. you there now where do you see yourself in five years Honestly, yeah. I I think uh, I think we'll be in good shape, son. I, I, uh, one of the biggest artists yep. in the world. That would be fantastic. That would be a, because then I could do all these things that I ha that I know I've been wanting to do. You have all these ideas, bro, and you just don't want to get them out yet because you don't want someone to steal them. Or what's the you deal? Just gotta, you just got to keep it a steady pace, man. I've been doing that, and it was worked out to this point. Like I like to write good songs, songs that I won't get tired of. You know. I was watching your videos. You really got, do you produce all your videos? Like, like direct all your videos? I help, or? yeah. You have to. You have to be involved in all of it. I was watching some of your past videos. Those are super dope. Drew Barrymore, the record. The new record you got out. You got a remix with Wale, too. Yeah. How did that come out? Come about? Um, I don't remember exactly how it came about. Somehow, we have the same agent, but I, that wasn't it. Um... It was just random, I think, through management. But Did he hear the song? Did yeah, we were going to have somebody else on the song. I won't name, but they never showed up to the studio Man, to record it. Did you dirty? It. It, I mean, whatever. <laughs> you know, like, I, I do, to be honest with you, I was way more excited about uh, Wale. Wale because I've been a fan of his since, like, 90210. And yeah. I was, I mean, I just, he's great. He's, like, a true artist and a true... He's just everything, man. He comes in when we're shooting the video, and he's just that guy. And, you know, and he he has ideas, and he wants to work with you on stuff. He doesn't just come in, and he's like, yo, cut the check. I'm out. Yeah. He's a cool dude, man. And he was like, yo, we're like Will Smith and Martin Lawrence, like the new version. And I'm like, <laughs> all right, hell yeah. Treated me like a, like a big brother, man. It was cool. I mean, like a little brother. He That's super me. dope. That's super dope. Who else do you want to work with in the game? Uh, Gambino, Frank Ocean. Um... Kanye at some point if he'll if he'll you know actually allow me into his he's like the Wizard of Oz I hear or something you know <laughs> only the yodeling kid and and Rick Rubin get a chance to work with Kanye yeah <laughs> um and who else gorillas gorillas would be a huge one man oh, that's classic that's super dope yeah I hear you mentioned Kanye a lot how do you what do you think about Kanye's new album first? I love it front to back one through seven. I haven't heard the whole thing oh, uh, I've heard song, like six songs of the seven you know, I think, you know, not all the way through. I can't listen to most things all the way through. Did you feel some type of way he was getting all political on us? Honestly, uh, no. I've heard so much from so many people mm -hmm. so often lately that it just was like, all right. And you know what? It's really like people, pe it doesn't even matter. It's, he was, what he said was crazy, but it's not even about the things that he said. It's more like, did you actually, did anyone actually read or look up what he said, or did you just look at the headline? The I headline. guarantee you most people did. And, like, if you saw a headline that says, like, Bryce Vine drowns dogs, that's what you know now. That's it. That's, it. that's, that's all like, there is to it. Yeah, you don't you don't care if if the rest of the story has nothing to do with that. It's just now, there. here's a fact. It was easy to gain, and, and we get to run with that, you know? Uh, Press has become Asian. like clickbait, where it's all click clickbait. You got to be careful what you say. Media is like a new religion, man. Yeah. They don't have to. They don't really have to give you the truth. They just have to give you like a little bit of it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So when can we expect the project? What's the latest and the greatest? All yeah, that? Uh, putting out two new songs like this month, June. Yeah, uh, on the ball and a song called La La Land. Um, that are for the fans, especially that I just I like. I, I haven't put out a new song since Drew Barrymore, mm -hmm. you know, and you want to keep people happy. So yeah. putting you, those out and then an album at some point. Yeah. Do you feel that's needed right now in this day and age? Because everyone just goes to the SoundCloud or YouTube and, and they get their new music so quick that you need to keep 
top of mind? Of course, man. I mean, in any competitive business, you need to be able to push out content quickly, yeah. right? But uh, but music is even more so because it has to like come from somewhere for for it to hit people the right way. You know, even if it's written by six people that all are focused on one subject. You know, it's going to hit those people the right way. Like, so I don't know. I, I just, I like hearing good songs and I don't hear of enough of them now. So I got to try to write them. There you go right there. When you do write and you make a song, do you have a team you show it to and be like, guys, what y'all think? Yeah, there's like just... four of us. <laughs> there's like four or five people that are, I like getting opinions, obviously, from like my mom, but she loves everything. Yeah, you know? that's what I was about to say. So... Did they just tell you yes because? No, but I mean, you, you know what I mean, though. Yeah. Like, And there's certain songs that you just don't show your mom. She's not going to be able to look past what you're saying in the yeah. song, you know. But uh, yeah, no, I just like my producer, my manager, my agent, and and the head of my label. That's dope. Yeah, that's dope. All right, man, let's get to some uh, headlining news like clickbait. What do you think uh, about this Pusha T and Drake situation? <laughs> I mean, it's kind of fun. It is kind of fun. It's it's nice to focus on something that's so low stakes, you know, for once. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like, it's just like, all right, so we just found out Drake has a kid. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So. This is fun. Like, there's nothing real. There's no real harm coming yeah. out of that. You know yeah. what I mean? It's just, oh, oh, snap. He's not perfect. <laughs> like, Finally I thought he was. Finally hearing Drake not respond, you're like, oh, did he get yeah, shut down? Yeah, I was, I was so shocked that he didn't come back with anything. I'm still waiting. I'm going to give him until Wednesday. I'm going to give him until tomorrow. That's my deadline. Because it'll be like a week since Pusha T dropped the story added on. It'll be, it'll be a week, right? The story. It's been more than that, right? It's been more than a week. I think it's been a week. Oh, been say a week. I heard it like the first twenty minutes it came out. I was just like, "Oh my god, this yeah, is that's happens. crazy." <laughs> who could who could you see winning that battle if Drake did come back? Who would you pick to win it? I mean, what are you basing it on? Just the ability to say horrible things to one another, <laughs> or uh, like career? You know what I mean? No, not career. We can't do career. We can't do career. Drake killed him already. Well, then I. I think Pusher doesn't have a limit. That's why he is, he's always pushing it. Get it? He's a push. He's a pusher of the limit. Ah, uh, I don't think. I don't think Drake wants to know what else he knows about. He don't want. That <laughs> you know smoke. what I mean? I don't, don't think want, he was expecting that. Yeah, he don't want that smoke at all. All right, man. Any final words for your fans? Anyone watching this? What do you want to say to them? Uh, thanks for the support, and uh, I'll keep trying to not be a douche. I guess. All right. Yeah. That works. And I'll write good songs. Yeah. Yeah, keep writing good songs. Yeah, you say on on the yeah, radio. Yeah, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah. They're just gonna see and be like, what's a douche, okay? Oh, well then uh, I'll try to <laughs> not be the bad guy. I don't know. Do you read what real quick before we bounce, do you read uh comments on, on social media? Yeah, I read everything. Some of those could be the most hateful, oh yeah, craziest people. And funniest. Yeah, yeah. And like when funniest. I see a picture, I just go for the comments now. I don't even look at the picture. I'm like, what are the comments saying? Oh yeah, oh yeah. You have to know. Yeah, you have to. There's some clever, mean people out there, though, <laughs> man. I mean, there's some things where I'm like, oh, that's cold, but you're still smiling, and you're like, dang, I'm gonna use that at some point. That's Do you good. ever feel some type of way? Does anyone comment on yours? You're like, all right. Oh man, yeah, I'm so numb to that. I don't. It doesn't it really. It genuinely does not bother me. Like I'll do a live feed every Wednesday and show fans new songs, and people hop on there all the time, and they just say whatever they want, yeah. man. Whatever they want, and. At this point, I just, yeah, it, it doesn't bother me because I know there's no way that they really think that. It's just they're <laughs> trying to have fun. Even the people that really hate you, they don't really hate you. They just, it's, they think it's fun to hate you. You just got to keep as many people from thinking it's cool to hate you as yeah. possible. You know? <laughs> That's a good way to look at it. I like that. Hey, man, appreciate you stopping by. Uh, thank, thank you so you. much.